So in today's video, I'm going to cover two things. I'm going to cover molar mass and how to calculate molar mass. And then I'm also going to talk briefly about how to calculate mass percent. Now, mass percent is also referred to as percent composition. All right, so molar mass. Well, quite simply, it's the mass of one mole of a compound. Often referred to as molecular weight or formula mass. I almost always refer to it as molar mass, but you might hear me say molecular weight. Every once in a while, I might say formula mass, especially if we're talking about ionic compounds. But molar mass is really almost identical to calculating atomic mass. You don't even calculate atomic mass, right? You just look at the periodic table, you find the decimal number, and that's the element's atomic mass. For example, carbon, 12.01 grams per mole. Well, compounds and molecules have a molar mass, not an atomic mass, because compounds aren't individual atoms. Let's do an example. It should make lots of sense. If you have a periodic table in front of you, this will be uh, very kind of intuitive. We have a certain chemical dye has the formula C10H6O3. So in A, they want me to calculate the molar mass. So essentially, I'm going to have to add up 10 carbons, 6 hydrogens, and 3 oxygens, right? Well, we're going to need the periodic table because we're, we're maybe some of us know the atomic masses already for guys like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Some of us don't. So I made a little grid here, 10 carbons, 10 times 12.01 grams per mole, six hydrogens, six times 1.01 grams per mole. The stuff in parentheses, those are the individual atomic masses of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen going down. Okay. If you add all these up, and I like to report my atomic masses and molar masses to the hundreds place, I just do, 174.16 grams per mole. This is the molar mass or molecular weight of C10H6O3. All right, so that's kind of an, a, I don't want to say no brainer, but if you know what atomic mass is, it should follow suit that getting the molar mass or the molecular weight is just a matter of being careful with your calculator. All right, here is part B of that same sample problem, top of page two. How many moles of C10H6O3 are contained in 1.56 times 10 to the minus two grams of the dye? Start with what you're given, put it over one. This is stoichiometry again, right? We use stoichiometry all day long in this course, okay? Well, I mean, it's, it's basically dimensional analysis. Stoichiometry technically is when we have reactions, when we go from reactants to products, reactants to another reactant. But this is the backbone and the way that we do stoichiometry when that time comes. Okay, so I should correct myself there. But we started with grams. We've got to get out of grams. That's why the 174 is on the bottom and then the one mole is on top. I essentially divided by the molar mass to get 8.96 times 10 to the minus fifth moles. Started with three sig figs, ended up with three sig figs, okay? Another example problem. Isopentyl acetate. Luckily, they've given us the formula, right? C7H14O2 gives bananas their smell. That's great. That's just superfluous information. Let's hone in on what's important. We've got one microgram of the compound. We want to go from one microgram to molecules. And then once we've got molecules, we can do the second part of the question, which is how many carbon atoms? First things first, one microgram. Do you remember that? That's a metric conversion. We've got to get from micrograms to grams. Okay. And then once we get to grams, we have to use the molar mass to get to moles. And then from moles, we're going to go to molecules. That's our plan. Can't do anything without the molar mass. Seven carbons, 14 hydrogens, two oxygens in the formula, right? Add up the individual atomic masses, multiply by seven for carbon, 14 for hydrogen, two for oxygen, 130.21 grams per one mole. That's the molar mass of isopentyl acetate. Now we can start with what we're given and put it over one. We're not given much. We're given one, one microgram. I'm not just going to write one microgram. I'm going to write one microgram of IA, 
isopentyl acetate. If you want to write C7H14O3, you can do that too. 10 to the 6 micrograms is 1 gram. That gets me out of that yucky micrograms into grams. Divide by the molar mass. So I got 130.21 grams on the bottom for every one mole of isopentyl acetate. They don't want moles. They want molecules. Well, one mole of anything contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items of that anything. We're talking about a molecule. So it's molecules IA. 4.62 times 10 to the 15th. We started with one sig fig, which limits the way we can report our answer. Five times 10 to the 15th molecules of C7H14O2. Okay, everything from the beginning to the end when we get our answer is a conversion factor and we assume conversion factors have an infinite number of significant figures. That's why I always say the number of sig figs we start with is the number of sig figs we end up with. Okay, now to do the second half of the question, we, we start with what we're given and put it over one. This time we're kind of quote, given our answer from the first part, five times 10 to the 15th molecules of IA. Well, one molecule of C7H14O3, look at C7, contains seven carbon atoms. You just multiply our answer from above times seven, apply proper significant figures, and it's four times 10 to the 16th atoms of carbon, okay?